to DeFi tactics. Remember, this is not financial advice. Do not make any financial decisions based on my word alone. Always do your own research. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And with all that said, today we're going to get into impermanent loss and how we can mitigate it. Let's jump right in. So, what is impermanent loss? Impermanent loss is essentially the difference in value of your assets had you held them in a wallet or provided them as liquidity in a liquidity pool. Providing in liquidity pools are based off of the automated market maker DEXs. What is an automated market maker DEX and how does liquidity pools and impermanent loss factor in? Automated market makers allow digital assets to be traded without permissions and automatically by using liquidity pools instead of traditional market buyers and sellers. This new technology is decentralized, always available for trading, and does not rely on the traditional interaction between buyers and sellers. So instead of having a buyer, say, trying to buy 10 Bitcoin at this price, and a seller trying to buy 10 Bitcoin trying to sell 10 Bitcoin at this price, instead of them having to come to the middle and agree and meet, that buyer or seller can go to the liquidity pool and either buy or sell, add or remove Bitcoin from that liquidity pool. There's no need to have two counterparties. And those who provide liquidity, as in the two assets, whether Bitcoin USD, uh, Kava USD. So to reiterate, on automated market maker platforms, instead of trading between buyers and sellers, users trade against a pool of tokens. So instead of a buyer and a seller needing to meet in the middle, that buyer or that seller just taps into the liquidity provided by that pool. So what is impermanent loss? Impermanent loss is the difference in the value of your tokens had you kept them in a hardware wallet or on an exchange or had you provide them in a liquidity pool. So this article on Medium does a pretty good job of explaining it. Impermanent loss typically affects liquidity pools that are meant to have an equal ratio of tokens, 50-50. So let's say a liquidity provider adds one ETH and one USDC to the liquidity pool. This is for an equal value of both tokens. The dollar amount of their deposit is $200 because their ETH and USDC are both worth $100 each. This is a, for instance, I know ETH is a lot higher currently at the moment. Currently there is 10 ETH and 1000 USDC in the liquidity pool, a 50-50 ratio, which gives the liquidity provider a 10% share of the pool they will receive liquidity pool tokens that they can use to redeem that 10% share of the pool at any time. Since the price of tokens relies on the ratio of their liquidity pools, their prices can separate from the prices on other exchanges. If the price of ETH increases by 100%, now worth $200 per ETH, the liquidity pool would have had to change to equal out that ratio to 7.071 ETH and 1,414.21 USDC. This is because the ratio of the pool has changed. It is no longer 50-50, which affected the ETH price and needed to get that pool back to 50-50 value between the two assets. This is the dailydefi.org impermanent loss calculator. And this can help visualize and explain impermanent loss because it is a very difficult concept to fully grasp. Again, the ratio is key between the value of the two assets. So as you can see, our initial price of token A, say is 99 cents, we'll say USDX. And then token B is $1.07, we'll say XRP. In the future, we have the stable coin remaining at 99 cents, and let's say XRP goes up to $4. Well, as you can see, we have an impermanent loss of 18.39%. Well, what does that mean? It means that if you had $500 of token A and $500 of token B initially, and you had held those tokens, as in not pro provided liquidity, 
the value would be $2,369.16. If you took those same tokens, $500 of token A, USDX, $500 of token B, we'll say XRP, and provided them in a liquidity pool, the value of those tokens, if you were to withdraw them, is $1,933.47, meaning there is a permanent loss. The difference between the value held, if you had held, and the value if you had provided liquidity is your impermanent loss. The key to note is impermanent loss means it is not permanent. It is not realized until you withdraw from the liquidity pool. So as long as your value is still in that liquidity pool, you have not taken an actual loss. Let me show you an example. So say token B, because all markets go up and down. The token B, XRP, goes up to $10. We have an impermanent loss of 40.90%, meaning the value held of 500 tokens of each, if held in the wall, would be $5,172. The value providing liquidity would have been $3,057.09. Now, markets go up and then they go back down and then they go back up. So if you do not pull out that liquidity, the value out of that liquidity pool, when the price and your permanent loss is a lot higher, you will not have realized that loss. So in this for instance, bull market peaks, you entered at 107, bull market peaks, two years later, the XRP price goes back down to $2 in the bottom of the bear market. These are hypothetical numbers. Well, now your impermanent loss is only 4.7%. Because you kept your value in those liquidity pools, you did not realize that 40% loss. So now value if held in your wallet over let's say two years, $1,434.58. That same value, if you withdraw it, would be $1,367. Now that's not including, over the course of, let's say, two years, all of the fees that you have collected from people swapping on the exchange. Additionally, that's not including any profits you've gained from yield farming or from staking those liquidity pool tokens to gain further rewards APY. So how can we mitigate some of this impermanent loss while still collecting fees from people swapping on the exchange as well as earning rewards? As you can see, I've got the Kava Swap page pulled up. One of the best ways to eliminate essentially impermanent loss is by providing liquidity in stablecoin pools. So as you can see here, the most value locked on Kava Swap is the stablecoin pool because there's no risk of impermanent loss. A stablecoin is pegged to a dollar, euro, whatever currency or asset. So it's pegged to that value, it's not going to change. So swapping from one dollar to another dollar, you have no worry of impermanent loss. Yet, in this for instance, Kava Swap, you're earning 122% rewards paid out in swap, as well as whatever the fees are per day that are getting distributed to you based on how much of the pool you have. Pancake Swap is on the Binance Smart Chain. You can see there is a USDC USDT pool and a USDT BUSD pool. Both of these are stable pools, stable coin pools. So you are earning your fees from people swapping between USDC and USDT, as well as staking those tokens to earn 10.2% for this pool and 7.57 for this pool. Impermanent loss is important to understand when you are providing liquidity in liquidity pools. However, with a couple tools and tricks, such as providing liquidity to stablecoin pools, we're able to mitigate the impact of impermanent loss while still earning a much higher return on our money than in a traditional bank. So to summarize, 
And permanent loss is the difference between the value of your assets if you held them without providing liquidity and the value of them if you provided liquidity and the ratio of the liquidity pool changes. However, in permanent loss does not factor in your liquidity fees, liquidity provider fees, as well as yield farming or fair token distribution or rewards APY fees. So in permanent loss, while it does impact us and our original investment, can be offset by providing stablecoin pools, by withdrawing those funds at a similar entry point of when we enter the liquidity pool, and by ensuring we're maximizing our liquidity provider fees, we're maximizing our rewards fees, and any yield farming fees. That wraps it up for today's video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next time.